So I want to ask you, if you are a Christian, have you been baptized? So I want to ask you that question. If you're a Christian, have you been baptized? Okay. And if not, I'm talking to you for the next few weeks. Now, if you have been baptized, I'm also talking to you. So don't think you can just fall asleep or stay home and stay in bed. Don't, no, you, you're not off, getting off that easy. Because over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about baptism. And whether you've been baptized or not, this matters. Because if you have been baptized, I want you to have some conversations with someone who hasn't. They're holding out. They're just not quite sure. And I, I want you to be able to talk really well about baptism. Because we're, we're, we're kicking off a little three-week series here called Baptism, Come to the Water. Come to the Water. Now, why are we doing this? Well, f- because we're doing baptisms in a few weeks. We're going to be doing baptisms at camp. So in two weeks, on the Sunday morning, we're going to be doing baptisms. But we're also going to be doing baptisms the week after, right after church. So if you're not going to the camp, don't worry. You can still do baptisms. You can still get baptized. So after service, we're going to head over to my house, um, have some baptisms, and then continue on with a pool party and barbecue. And and if you haven't been to one of the Rhodes Pool Party and Barbecues, you need to come to these because they're a blast. So, so that's why, because we're, we're, I want to give you an opportunity here this month to get baptized. And, and I want to talk about baptism because it's important. It's important to understand accurately what baptism is and what it's not. Because to be honest, I think there are a lot of misunderstandings out there about baptism. There, there are a lot of things that I hear, especially if you've grown up in the church. Maybe you've heard some stuff from a, your pastor, uh, maybe from your parents, and some of it might be a little off. So I want to get, get us all on the right page to understand God's heart and God's plan for baptism. So, so I ask you that same question. If you're a Christian and you have not been baptized, why not? Why not? Well, for me, it was almost five years between the time I accepted Christ and I got baptized. Almost five years. I I chose to become a Christian to follow Christ, to give my life to Christ as a sophomore in high school. But it wasn't until my junior year in college that I actually got baptized. And so here's a picture of me getting baptized as a 21-year-old. I know it's so grainy. It's like we're taking photos with a Flintstones camera. Like, really? Yeah, this was the the old, like, super old school film cameras and all of that. But this is the only picture I own of my baptism. No video, no cool little montage. Nope. That's it right there. Um, But yes, I was actually that thin, and yes, I once actually had hair. That is true. So, So I got baptized five years after believing in Christ. Why the wait? Why did I wait that long? Well, for me, my youth group didn't really talk much about baptism. They only did baptisms once a year, and that was on a retreat that I was never able to go to because I was playing water polo in high school. And so I was never on the one retreat where they did baptisms. And so I just didn't get baptized. And I didn't hear much about it either. So I went off to college, and I didn't hear much about it either there. And then finally, finally my junior year, uh, it, was, it was actually the summer before my junior year. I, we got out, we're, we're kicking off school and all of that, and, and then I hear in this message that baptism is a critical part of being a Christian. That God desires, God even commands his followers to get baptized. So I said, okay. It signed me up, and that's Pastor Matthews of this little tiny old, like old school Baptist church, and there's me in the little white robe. That's how they did baptisms, and, and I got baptized. And it was because I had never heard how important baptism was. And once I heard it, I said, okay, I have to get baptized then. So that was, that was me. That was m- my gap. How about you? If you're a Christian and you haven't been baptized, why not? What's holding you back? What is it that's keeping you from saying yes to getting baptized? 
Um, or if you did get baptized and you waited, maybe it was a few years, maybe it was a decade from the time that you, you identify yourself as following Christ to the time that you got baptism. Why did you wait? Think back to those days and what was going on in your head that made you wait between the, those two periods of time. Yeah. Well, in talking with people about baptism over the years, I've heard a lot of reasons why someone doesn't want to get baptized. So I, I want to share a few of them with you and see if any of this resonates with you. I think the most common one is, I'm just not ready. That's too big of a commitment. I'm just not ready for it. Or maybe it's, I need to grow in my faith. Or I need to clean up my life a little bit. You know, I, I need to get this sin under control. Whatever it is that you're into. They're like, I need to get that under control. Then, then I'll get baptized. Uh, or, or this one, I, I, I had, back in my youth ministry days, I had someone come and tell me, well, my parents told me that after you get baptized, you can't sin anymore. And I know I'm going to sin, so I don't want to get baptized. Um, I even had a parent come up to me once, and, and, and their kid was, was rebelling and painting their hair purple and staying out past curfew and, and, and just being generally, generally naughty. <laughs> Okay. And the parent came up to me and said, I don't understand what happened. He got baptized? What, well, like that makes us all of a sudden no longer sinners? <laughs> no, I didn't say that to her. But, <laughs> but I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about baptism going on. And I think all of those, all of those reasons I've heard over the years, all of those things that have crossed your mind, because I could tell by your smirks that you've had some of these thoughts as well, all of these, I think, come down to one big misunderstanding about baptism. And it's this idea that baptism is kind of like this. It's kind of like leveling up in Christianity. Okay? So there's like, okay, I, I'm kind of a Christian. There's this. And then maybe like if I'm a more mature Christian, I won't sin as much. And then if I'm an even more mature Christian, then I'll go to church every week and I'll never miss church. And then, then I can get baptized. And then if I'm a super Christian, I'm like a pastor or a missionary or something like that. But they're way over here. And you might be feeling like you're more like over here. I'm just kind of the Christian. I'm trying to be good, but I also kind of like being bad sometimes. But I go to church sometimes. And, but baptism feels like it's something up there. And you need to level up. Maybe even level up again before you're really ready for baptism. But see, there's a problem with that. That is not at all how the Bible talks about baptism. Not at all. That is totally, completely wrong. So that's what we're talking about this week. Uh, this week and then the next couple weeks is I want to give you some right thinking about baptism. So, so first, because there are all of these, um, all of these misconceptions, we actually did a series uh, about a year and a half ago called Baptism, Not Just for Super Christians. I highly recommend this. If you have not been baptized, go to your website, download our app, open it up. It's in the sermons. Look for that baptism graphic. We had six weeks where, where, where I talked about the big key passages, the big theological concepts behind baptism. This is going to kind of be the abbreviated version, but I highly encourage you go check out that series. It's actually one of our top viewed series online. So baptism, it's not just for super Christians. You don't have to be way down the scale, level up, level up, level up to get baptized. So today we're going to talk about the essentials particularly four essentials of baptism. And I, I guarantee, if you understand these four things about baptism, you will, you will understand God's perspective. You will be aligned correctly. But if you miss any four of these, or any one of these four, that's when we start to have skewed ideas. That's when we start to kind of blow it. Okay? So four essentials today. First, let's talk about essential number one. Baptism is core to being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Baptism is core to being a disciple of Jesus Christ. It's not optional. It's not secondary. It is foundational. It is essential. 
This is where I think my youth group, as much as I loved my youth group, I think this is the one that I accepted Christ into. I think this is what they got wrong because I didn't hear this for years. Nobody told me that getting baptized was an essential part of the Christian faith. They kind of missed the boat on that one. And you don't have to work hard to see this. We're going to read one of the single most important verses in the entire New Testament. It's called the Great Commission. And the reason it's called the Great Commission is it's what Jesus sends out his followers to do. It's one of his last teachings, one of the last things he says to his followers. And it says this, Go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Baptism is core to being a disciple. And Jesus told his followers, your job, you can boil it down to two things. Help people become followers of Christ and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Be a disciple, get baptized. Those things are always connected in Scripture, and it starts right here. It starts with the foundational essential. Go and make disciples and baptize them. You can't separate those two. So, first essential, baptism is core to being a disciple of Jesus. Let's talk about the, se- the second one. This is whom you, who you identify with, okay? Who do you identify with? So married couples out there, how many of you are wearing your wedding ring? How many of you, does it still fit, okay? Hopefully it uh, does. If not, listen to the last series we did, okay? So how many, okay, married couples wearing your wedding, wedding ring? This identifies that I am married to someone else. I am in a relationship with that person. I identify myself with another person. And that's what essential number two talks about. Getting baptized identifies you with Jesus Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. Getting baptized identifies you with Jesus Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. You know, bapt- I love baptism. This is one of, one of my favorite things to do as a pastor because there's something spiritual. There's something mystical that happens in baptism that we kind of on our earthly plane don't entirely understand. There's something amazing that happens. So I want to read to you one of the defining passages on baptism. It's in the New Testament out of the book of Colossians. This is one of the best things that Paul, the Apostle Paul, wrote on baptism. And I'm going to read it out of the NLT because I find it's a little easier to follow than the NIV, especially without doing a bunch of a big explanation. Here we go. You were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. You were dead because of your sins. Because of your sinful natures, your sinful nature was not cut away, not yet cut away. Then God made you alive in Christ, for he forgave your sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. That is an amazing passage. And it talks about this deep spiritual transformation that happens when we believe in Christ. When we say yes to Jesus, something happens. It's not just a mental agreement. It's not just you now, you have to go find a church. No, something actually transforms spiritually in your, yourself. We die to our old sinful self. And Christ gives us a new self, and we are raised to new life in Christ, belonging to Christ, identifying with Christ. And Paul says this spiritual transformation that happens is connected to baptism. Somehow it's connected. Now, don't get me wrong. Baptism does not save you. 
Believing in Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior saves you. But something big happens in baptism. It goes along with that transformation. It's also why when, when we as River Life baptize, we baptize in a pool and we dunk. There are some churches that will sprinkle, some churches that will splash. All can, no, we dunk because there's amazing symbolism in watching a person die to themselves, go into the grave just as Jesus did, going under the water and then coming up out of the water with new life. And I believe, I don't understand, but I believe that when a person physically comes out of that water, there is something new in Christ about them. And if you're a Christ follower and you have not been baptized, you're missing something. There is something about this transformation that you are missing. And God doesn't want you to miss out on that new life that he has. So getting baptized identifies you with Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. So let's talk about the third. Let's talk about the third. Getting baptized is a public testimony of your faith. Getting baptized is a public testimony of your faith. (laughs) Excuse me. Um, so in Matthew 7, Jesus, excuse me, Matthew 10, Matthew 10, Jesus says this incredible thing as he's sending off the disciples on their first sort of solo mission. He's sending off his followers, and he says this to them. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I'll disown my father in, uh, before my Father in heaven. That is a heavy thought. If you let that sink in, that is big. And what it says is going public with your faith is really, really important. It might often even be so important that if you're not willing to go public with your faith, Does this possibly say that God won't go public in saving you? Maybe that is what this says. So there's not really a place in God's economy for closet Christians where you kind of keep it on the DL. You know, it's funny. I laugh every time this happens. And it ha- it's happened enough that I get some good laughs. So, so I'm on Facebook, and, and, I, and I follow a bunch of folks here at River Life because you're my friends, and I'm your friend, and we're friends, okay? So I follow, and, and you post something about, about, like, from church, or maybe you get tagged in a photo from church, and people comment, comment, and then one of the comments, someone goes, you go to church? Big question mark. And you can just imagine, it's like, you? go to church are you sure we were out last night (laughs) but it's amazing because because there's this sense there are people in your lives who do not know you're a christian now i'm not saying you have to go around with like the giant jesus saves t-shirt and do the fish on your car and wear the giant like one foot cross no okay but but if you're honest with yourself Are there people in your lives where you kind of downplay the fact that you go to church? Maybe you don't say anything. And there have been times where it could have come up naturally. I mean, you don't have to be a jerk about being a Christian. But you know very well there have been times that you've held back because you don't want them to know that you go to church. Because whether, whether you're afraid of what they're going to say, what they're going to think, they won't invite you to all the fun stuff anymore because now you're a Christian. Okay? In God's world, there's not a place for that. God calls his followers to be public. And again, you don't have to shout it from the rooftops. Well, unless God calls you to shout it from the rooftops. Okay? But... It means that if, if the opportunity comes up, yeah, yeah, I, I went to a church event last night. 
Okay? Or I don't want to go out. I want to sleep in. I, I got this thing at church in the morning. Okay? So, so this happens a lot, and getting baptized is part of that public testimony. It's letting the whole world know that you're a Christian. And if you're afraid to let the whole world know you're a Christian, your faith might not be quite what you think it is. You might be trying to fool yourself into thinking you are something that you might not be. Let's talk about the fourth one. Lastly, the fourth essential. Getting baptized is an act of obedience that always follows believing in Christ. Getting baptized is an act of obedience that always follows believing in Christ. In one of the best sermons in the whole Bible occurs in Acts 2. And it's Peter. After Jesus died, Peter kind of stepped into the role as the, the leader of the church, the sort of pastor of pastors, leader of leaders. And he gave the very first sermon, and man, was it a good one. He traced Jesus all the way through the Old Testament. It was powerful. He was, he was empowered by the Holy Spirit, and he preached boldly. And at the end of this sermon, at the end of chapter 2, here's what he says. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And look what happens next. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. 3,000 people chose to believe in Jesus Christ, and 3,000 people got baptized. I think my arms would fall off by the end of that. Uh, one, two, three. <laughs> Be like, help, tag team, someone come in, man, because my arms are dead. But think about that. At the end of this long message of, of, of Peter tracing Jesus all the way through the Old Testament, and then talking about his death, and then talking about his resurrection, he said two things. He said, repent and get baptized. Repent means turn away from your sin and turn toward God. Turn away from your sin, turn toward God. Repent and then get baptized because it is important. It is important. That is the pattern that we see in the book of Acts over and over again. I could stand up here and read 10 passages, and they fall, all follow the exact same pattern. Somebody believes, and somebody gets baptized. Not someone believes, graduates high school, goes off to college, has a few years of college, then gets baptized. Nowhere in Acts do we see that. They believe, and they get baptized. And over the next two weeks, next week, and then camp, and then the following week, we're going to read two stories out of the book of Acts about people choosing to believe and get baptized. But that is a consistent pattern. Baptism always followed belief. Baptism always. You can't have one without the other. You can't. Now, this, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where it gets kind of hard. So first, are you a follower of Jesus Christ? That's the first question to ask yourself. Have you made him the ruler of your life? Is he your Lord? Do you belong to him? So ask yourself that first. And then, if that's true, you have to get baptized. It's not, it's not an option. It's not a choice. God is calling you. The Holy Spirit is inside you now saying, get baptized. I don't even need to pray with someone to determine whether they should get baptized or not if they were a follower of Christ. Because the answer is always yes. The answer is always yes. Okay? And now, here's where it's hard. If you are not ready to be baptized, if you feel like you're not ready, then you might not be ready to call yourself a Christian. 
There is something in this. Maybe you don't really want to give your life up to Christ. Maybe you have a misunderstanding about baptism, and I can help you with that. But if you're resisting God as your Lord, and you don't want to get baptized, because then it means you'll have to stop doing the sin you like, that God's been trying to tell you to stop. Or you have to be more loving or more forgiving when you don't want to be. All right. So this is, this is tough. If you are resisting baptism and you call yourself a Christian, I encourage you right now, start thinking about why you're resisting. Why are you resisting? But also start to ask yourself, what makes me a Christian? If I don't want to get baptized, am I really a follower of Christ? So how do you know you're ready? If that's one of the most common questions that I've heard is, I'm just not ready. How do you know when you're ready? Well, I've got three questions for you. Three questions. You can, this is something based on, out, of a, out of a doctrine called the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed. We sing a song about it. Um, and in fact, this is such an important document uh, sort of paragraph in the, the Christian church that in September we're going to do a whole series called I Believe, and it's going to be on the Apostles' Creed. And we're going to continue singing the song, and we're going to look at what, what we believe. Okay? But this is also kind of called the baptism pretest. This is the baptism pretest. In fact, the early church used this creed, this paragraph, to determine whether someone should get baptized. Literally, this was the test. Like a, pa a priest, a pastor would, would sit down with someone and say, okay, blah, blah, blah. do you agree with that? Do you believe this? Yes. Okay. Do you believe that? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Check, check, check. Okay. Let's get dunked. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing today. So I've, I've converted the Apostles' Creed into questions. In the actual statement, they are I believe statements. I've turned them into questions. Okay. If you can say yes to these three questions, get baptized. Hey, I'll take you out to the hose right now. And <laughs> okay? So three questions. Here we go. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Next question. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son? Our Lord, who was, there we go, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified and was died and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father, and, uh, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I know that was a bit of a run-on sentence. The, the, the English teacher, clearly this person flunked English. English teacher would be like, red mark, red mark, red mark. But we get the idea. <laughs> Lastly, do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? That was the test that the early church used to determine what someone should get baptized. Notice nowhere in there have you stopped looking at porn? Are you no longer getting drunk? Are, have you cut up your credit cards? Do you come to church every day? Do you pray and read your Bible every day? No, nope. nowhere in there is that. Because that's what the work of Christ in your life does as you follow him. He helps you with all of that. But the test for baptism is three, three questions. Do you believe in the Father? Do you believe in the Son, Jesus Christ? And do you believe in the Holy Spirit and the church? So if you said yes to those three questions, I want you to get baptized. God wants you to get baptized. Your River Life family wants you to get baptized. And you've got two options, two times to do it. In two weeks at camp, we're going to do a baptize. And then the following week, if you're not going to camp, that's okay. The following week, you get baptized. Okay. And if you can say yes to those, get baptized. 
make that decision to identify yourself with Christ's life, death, and resurrection. To make a public statement. Go public. Go big or go home. And I want to give you that chance. Okay? And if you said no to parts of that, you're like, I don't know about that part. I don't know about that part about Jesus. I'm not quite sure I believe that. That's okay. Don't get baptized. Let's sit down and talk. Find a Christian whom you respect and who, who you said, if I were a Christian, I would want to be like that person. And sit down and ask him about that. Hey, what's this whole thing about Jesus resurrecting? I get him dying for my sins, but I'm not sure I buy the resurrecting. Too much historical evidence against it, blah, blah, blah. Okay, sit down with someone and have a conversation. If you want to find a good book, I can make, give you some recommendations. So, I want to leave you with this question. This is an amazing question. And this is what God said to Paul. At that time, he was known as Saul. And he was a killer of Christians. Okay, He, he was an executor of Christians. God called him from that life, transformed him, and then asked him this question. And so, so God on this, when, when God kind of, he literally knocked Saul to the ground. That's how much like overwhelming brightness came down. on Knocked him to the ground, blinded him, transformed his life, called him, called Saul to follow him, God. And here's what he said. Here's what God said to Paul then. What are you waiting for? Get up and be baptized. Have your sins washed away by calling on the name of the Lord. So I ask you the same thing. What are you waiting for? Get up and get baptized. Have your sins washed away by calling on the name of the Lord. Join me in prayer.